Hello everyone, this is Mukundan Raghavan and this series we are going to cover how to build your own automation framework from the scratch. We might be having a small library or small framework which might suffice our local needs. But this series we are going to cover how the enterprise level of application can be automated by using the enterprise level of automation framework. This video is all about introduction, what are the capabilities any framework should have in order to become an enterprise level of automation framework. And obviously in coming videos, we will go step by step procedure how to implement that. Let's see what are the capabilities we are going to discuss. Any test automation work should have these capabilities to become the enterprise level application automation framework. On your left hand side, you can see parallel testing. So that means that since we have multiple scenarios or multiple test cases in the bigger application, we should have the parallel testing. And second one might be the code quality. Yes, in the initial stage, we might create a normal code. But if you have the big application and the huge number of test cases, you need to maintain the code quality so that your maintenance of the framework will be good and you will not have any vulnerabilities. API mocking and stubbing. Since we are creating the UI automation framework, you might think like, why do we need the API mocking and stubbing? Yes, I do agree. There will not be a chance that you will be doing the API testing. But if you do the login scenario again and again, it's not necessary for the entire automation. So that time we can automate by using the API mocking or API calling so that you save a lot of time and you have the efficient automation. And documentation, yes. When we create the bigger level of automation framework, it's not a single person who is going to create or update or maintain. It might be the huge number of team. In order to have a quality in our automation framework itself, we should have the documentation, how the project works, how, how to install the things, how to maintain the things, and how to connect with the different people in case of any doubts. Then reporting and logging. The final output of the test automation framework obviously will be the reporting part and logging part. Reporting part might be for the main stakeholders, whereas logging part will help us any automation user to identify where actually the problem is lying. CICD integration. Nowadays, you create any kind of automation, but at the end of the day, it should be connecting with your CICD. CICD stands for continuous integration and continuous deployment or delivery. Based on the project requirement, you might connect with Azure or AWS or Jenkins and any CICD tools. Retry mechanism. Even though we create a robust automation, sometimes application itself may not have a good performance. Because of that, you need to have the retry mechanism. It's not about the automation code quality, but about the browser performance or the application performance. So you will be retrying maybe two or three times based on your application stability. And this should be done by code itself. Reusable utilities. So these reusable utilities will take care of the, the other things other than just automating the test cases. For example, Excel reading or browser maintenance or logging mechanism. So those kind of reusable metal, usable utilities will be just considered under this category. And environment management. Any automation framework should handle multiple environments. For example, developer environment, UIT environment, SIT environment, system integration testing environment, system testing environment, pre-prod environment, user acceptance test environment, like that, there are a lot of environments will be there in the enterprise level applications. So your automation framework should have the capability to maintain all these environments and any point of time, we should be able to execute our test cases in this given environment. And second one in this list will be data parameterizing or data driven testing. Along with automation testing, sometimes we need to do the data parameter testing or data driven testing in other words. This data driven testing can be using Excel, CSV, JSON or XML file. Basically, we will be having a single test case where the use cases or the test data will be multiple. So our test automation framework should handle that one as well. Credential encryption or let's say the main data should be encrypted. For example, username and password should be encrypted. It shouldn't be hard coded in our automation framework. And whenever we push some code about our automation, it should not have any credentials directly used. We might 
externalize or we should encrypt with the, a private salt or key. Version control. Obviously, test automation framework is not a single time work. It will be the continuous efforts to improve the automation framework. And it's not only by one person, it can be with the team. So we do have a version control systems to maintain that. Your automation framework should include the version control. Very simple example would be the Git. Self-healing. Self-healing is one of the wonderful concepts. Either it can be from the A itself or it can be a normal if-else loop itself. Basically, whenever your locator breaks in test automation, your automation framework should have the capability to heal by itself so that you don't need to rework on your automation framework for a simple locator change or any broken locator. Now we can implement self-healing by our own logics and mechanism as a static or we can include any AI tools to have a self-healing. Cross-browser testing. Obviously, if you are using any application which is customer facing, that means that this application can be opened in any browser. It can be Chrome, Firefox, Edge browser and different browsers. So based on the user data, we will be testing our own test cases in the different browsers to make sure customer experience is same in all the browsers. Test data generation. Sometimes we need to create a random test generating data or sometimes we need to use the data which looks like a real-time data. Obviously, we are not using the real-time data, but it should look like. For example, rather than typing test one, test two for the state name or the customer name, we should create the a real look like data. So for that, we should have some libraries or some reusable utilities to generate that. So basically, your test automation framework should have a enough mechanism to generate the test data by itself based on the condition. Test evidences. After executing your test automation framework, people will be looking for the evidences. Some people might prefer to see the JSON file. Even most of the people will prefer to the HTML file. But for developer's perspective, in order to reproduce the bug, they may look for the video evidences. To satisfy everyone's needs, our automation framework should have all kinds of report or covering maximum types of reports. So these are the features we should have in any test automation framework. We are going to use the Playwright. Obviously, Playwright has a wonderful futures or amazing futures when compared to the other tools. But still, it's our necessary point to make our own framework, to have a structure, and to build a structure, we need to go step by step. So that's what we are going to do in this series. And probably you will also join with me to build a framework from the scratch. Yes, this is all about this video. So in this video, we have covered what is our plan. Basically, we are going to create the enterprise level of framework to handle multiple features that we have discussed just now. In coming videos, we will be doing a lot of development activities like a baby steps. And this is all about this video. And always be a rainbow in others' clothes.